Hello, folks. Welcome to Science Talk. I'm your host, Jim Massa. I want to share with you a series of uh, uh, figures that are on K uh, posted on the Twitter feed, and it involves uh, changes in the jet stream. So this uh, first uh, diagram figure that we have here, you can see the outline of the African continent here. So then this would be uh, the European aspect going over into Asia, Arctic Ocean, North Pole, so forth. And what do we see? Follow this pinkish magenta color. We can see how the jet stream dips down. This is almost the subtropical latitudes. It dips down and comes right, right back up. Dips even further down, we see some low uh, altitude, uh, see not altitude, latitude movements here, right? So just like over here where we see it dip down to low uh, latitudes, see it over here, and we see this wavy feature, and you can see the ribbon continues all the way over this way. Jet stream is changing. It's becoming more meridional versus zonal. And this just shows you kind of another uh, aspect of it. Again, we see the, the dip down. This is in the basically the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, but again, to lower uh, uh, latitudes. And uh, this little circle here, I guess, is a station there. And it uh, looks like they give us a coordinate of basically 40 degrees north and almost 26 degrees east uh, longitude. And minus 24.3 C, so this is obviously at some uh, altitude level. I want to return to this in a moment. First, let me show you this one. This is a very good diagrammatic representation of what's happening with the jet stream. So you can see the outline of uh, the Iberian Peninsula here, right? Portugal, Spain, rest of Europe. Okay, there's the Black Sea, Ukraine, a whole bunch of uh, issues going on right about now. Scandinavia, so on. So we see the jet stream moving up. Then it dips down, so the meridional flow moves across and then comes back up again. Now, what's interesting to note, and of course, the overall motion is west to east, as we see indicated here. What's interesting to note is as it spins on the, on the upper reaches, it creates an anticyclonic or clockwise spin, which is typically associated with high pressure systems. And indeed, this is be like a high pressure ridge here. So we have this, you know, basically this pinches off, you could think of it. Like I explained to you with the Gulf Stream, the Gulf Stream isn't necessarily a ribbon, but you have all these uh, eddies that pinch off of it. Well, you're going to have eddies in the atmosphere pinching off it, and this will be a clockwise flowing or anticyclonic spin. But when it dips down to here, now it pinches off in this direction, which is cyclonic or counterclockwise. So clockwise, counterclockwise. And this would be typically associated with a low pressure system. So you might be uh, perhaps uh, having some precipitation, depends on the specific condition. But what happens here is that this brings up warm air from lower latitudes, and then this brings down cold air or cooler air from higher latitudes to uh, lower latitudes themselves so that you have a cooling down effect, and in this case, Scandinavia, the UK, and uh, parts of Northern Europe, Northwestern Europe. So then following this along, again, spins back up, and it basically creates over here the same situation over here. You're going to get a pinch off. You're going to get anticyclonic spin or clockwise spin. Another high pressure ridge here, right? 
and so on. So with, instead of being zonal, which is just this way, we get this meridional flow with the resulting pinch-offs of clockwise, anti-clockwise, uh, or counterclockwise flow, anti-cyclonic, cyclonic spin, right? We're going to see these pinch off here. So you're going to pull down cold air to lower latitudes in certain locations. You're going to pull up warm air to high latitudes in certain locations. And now the thing is, as this, this is moving east to, uh, excuse me, west to east, so then what happens? The warm air eventually slides this way. The cold air eventually slides this way. So you start getting these crazy temperature swings, which is what we see a lot of. Here in Alaska, you know, we were having something like 20 above and 20 below, 20 above, 20 below, because of this very nature of this meridional flow, bringing a warm air, then bringing a the cold air, bringing a warm air, bringing a cold air. We saw the same thing up here in Alaska this past winter. Okay, let's look at this guy. And as I said, figure two, disturbance of the Arctic jet stream allowing penetration of air masses of contrasted temperatures. Okay, just like I just explained to you. So this was the quote-unquote typical situation that it used to be before climate change effects really started kicking in. We note that the polar jet stream is a zonal flow. The cold air is contained, so you have a stable polar vortex. Right? You have a strong west to east flow. Now, what they're indicating here is 10 to 30 miles above the surface, and the jet stream being 5 to 9 miles above the surface. Kind of got a little funky in there. But putting that aside, this jet stream was zonal. Basically stayed in, in latitude. Didn't go wild, crazy swinging around of latitudes. That contained the vortex so that the polar region stayed cold and the other uh, latitude region stayed what would be expected. Now with the disruption, thanks to climate change, we see what I basically what I just showed you here, right? That's what I just showed you here. So now we see this here. So we would expect to see a counterclockwise flow here, a clockwise flow here, a clockwise flow here and here, and another uh, counterclockwise flow here. So basically where it dips down, expect to see counterclockwise airflow. Where it pushes up, expect to see clockwise airflow. Cyclonic, anticyclonic. Low pressure, high pressure. Right? So the warm air moves north, the cold air moves south. Now what I want to point out to you is what we see here. Kind of looks like a bit of a dumbbell shape, doesn't it? Call it the disruptive polar vortex. And it's moving and basically it radiates outward. You know, this way, this way, right? It radiates outward as the cold air moves south. But what this is really representing is the Arctic dipole. In the Arctic dipole, you typically have, you know, um, like a high pressure system over the North American side, a low pressure system off the Eurasian side. This will move this way and this way, so it moves east and west, west and east, as does this. The movements of these air systems affect surface currents. And they affect surface currents such that they either help contain the sea ice within the Arctic Ocean or help push it out the Fram Strait, depending on the configuration, depending on what this is doing. And don't forget, the Arctic Dipole is now known to interact with the Arctic Oscillation as well as the North Atlantic Oscillation. Right, North Atlantic Oscillation, we're looking at the locations of the high and precious, low pressure systems off the Azores in the uh, Norwegian seas and so forth. Okay. I did videos on those three uh, oscillatory uh, systems as well as the other oscillatory system. So, you know, check those out. But before climate change really started taking place, 
the Arctic Dipole really did not exist. Certainly not as strongly defined as it is today. And the paper that formally identified the Arctic Dipole was published in 2006. And uh, I'm pleased to say that uh, I played a small role in that with my research, uh, along with other uh, you know, researchers and colleagues, etc. You know, it's, it's, it's always a team effort, but we were tracking what was going on with the sea ice. The atmosphere folks were, were noticing what was going on in the atmosphere, and we realized that the behavior of these uh, air pressure systems affected what the sea ice was doing. And then we realized that it oscillated back and forth. You know, this would move back and forth, this would move back and forth, but they kind of move back and forth in conjunction. And how, and thus for the interactions influence what happened to the sea ice. And we now identify it as the Arctic Dipole. As I said, the uh, paper was published back in 06. Uh, John Walsh was the lead author uh, on that uh, paper. But that's what this is showing. This is showing the Arctic Dipole. And of course, it interacts, as they just said, with the Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation. So check out those uh, videos related here. But this, this shows it very clearly. Zonal flow, meridional flow. This leads to the wild swings in uh, temperatures as well as perhaps pre precipitation events. Cold air dipping south, warm air move, pushing northward, but then this whole thing moves west to east so that if they got the cold air pushing this way, it's, it keeps sliding and sliding and sliding. And then you get this oscillation between you know, warm temperatures, cold temperatures. This is an example of how things are changing. So I wanted to show this to you, a quick little explanation. You know, people say, why are we seeing such crazy swings in temperatures? And then for that matter, sometimes uh, it brings with the precipitation events. This is why. This is a consequence of how we've been heating up the atmosphere. And don't forget that heat energy is going into the ocean which also helps fuel this and drive it. So uh, I said, just a quick little explanation as to how the situation has, has been changing. Hope you found this interesting, informative. Thank you for your time. Hello folks, this is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.